Okay, welcome everybody to our Tuesday night shiur. So I wanted to discuss today the idea of going into a little bit of depth into Sfirata Omer and understanding a little bit of Sfirata Omer with what Sfirata Omer is, what our mindset should be, that kind of thing. Um, I hope everybody can see me. If you can, please send a message. Um, and I want to start through different, to read through different commentaries and different sources to really give us an idea because many times Firata Omer really passes us by. We think it's a time of mourning, which is it, it is. And we all know the story of the 24,000 students of Rabbi Akiva. But I want to go today into a little bit more of depth. Again, if somebody can't hear me, just I know Zoom sometimes can be a little bit tricky. But if somebody can't hear me, please let me know. Um, because I really like to give everybody a good idea of what's going on here and maybe give you a, a different perspective on what really Sfirata Omer is and what we're really doing with this counting. And it's not just a verbal counting. There's really something happening to us. There's something transpiring, like in everything that we do in Judaism and everything that the Torah dictates of us to do. We know that we spoke about this before. We said that really the Seder night is something that's really contradictory even though everything is going according to plan and everything is very orderly and everything is very organized on the seder night something out of the ordinary happens the idea of pesach we explained that pesach means to skip over there's something that happens a great huge big light comes down to the world and everybody's able to access that big light you're able to now foresee you're able to now get to a very high level free as opposed to building yourself up slowly. And that's called Pesach, because in the same way that Hashem skipped over, He's allowing you that ability to skip over as, as well. And we call that in the Torah, Mokhin de Gadlut. Usually the Mokhin de Gadlut means a higher level of awareness. Usually the way the things that work is that you have a small level of awareness, and then you slowly build yourself up. On Pesach night, the opposite happens. So Pesach night, you get this high level of awareness. And then what happens is that's mochim de gadlut. That's a higher level of awareness. And then we get dropped. And when we get dropped, we're going to reach that higher level again. But now continues the, starts the process of Sfirata Omer. What is Sfirata Omer? It says, V'safartim lachem. We're now starting to count and we're fixing every little detail of our makeup in order to get back to that higher level of awareness. So really it's a 49 day journey of a person fixing all of his parts that when we come to the climax, which is obviously Matan Torah, which is the, the highest revelation of godliness, the highest revelation of, of, of light and the, highest, and the highest level that a Jew could reach until we're called godly, until we, we disseminate ourselves from the Yetzirah, we're building that up and we're doing, we're doing it 49 days. So the Zohar starts us off right away. It says, Rabbi Abba and Rabbi Acha Yulchim Baderch. Rabbi Abba and Rabbi Acha were walking on the way. Amar Rabbi Chia, Katuv, we know that this idea of Sfirat Omer says, V'safartem lachem mircharat ha-Shabbat. That you have to count from the day after Shabbat, Shabbat meaning Pesach, miyom aviyachem et Omer at Nufa. So the Korban Omer, first of all, why do we count the Korban Omer? We know that there's an idea that to come to the Beit HaMikdash, they used to bring the Korban Omer, and that used to happen on Pesach. So from the Korban Omer, the sacrifice that's called the sacrifice of the Omer, allows the harvest of the year before to be allowed. That's why you see many times you go to bakeries and you go to other places, and it's, you ask them, is your Kemach Yashan? Is it, is it something Yashan? It doesn't mean old. It means that it hasn't been allowed because the Korban Omer has been brought. So the Korban Omer of this Pesach is really allowing the crop from Rosh Hashanah to and then what happens is from Rosh Hashanah again, we're going to have to start this idea of Yasham because the Korban Omer was, no, was not brought in order to allow the, the new crop to be given. So it's really the Korban Omer is allowing something that was already planted to come to fruition, which has in its, in its depths, and we're going to deal with that today. So Rabbi Acha and Rabbi Abba were walking on the way, and this is the way that all the stories in the Zohar happen. They're always walking on the way, and something sparks a dialogue, something sparks a situation. The, and he asks, one of them asks, what does it mean, what does it mean, this idea of a safart in lachem? What does it mean that we're counting the Omer? Amar lo, so he said to him, 
We already spoke about the Vatachaze. Israel, Keshayu be Mitzrayim, when Am Yisrael was in Egypt, Ayu be Reshut Acher. Meaning we were in the forces, we were held by some other kind of force. That's why we were slaves in Mitzrayim. Vayu achazim batuma. Really what, what happened was Mitzrayim was a rebirth. Why was there a rebirth? Because we were in the stomach of the Sitra Acher. The other side held us in their stomach. And that's where Am Yisrael gave a rebirth. So says Rabbi Abba and Rabbi Acha, Ki isha tumashla. Am Yisrael was at a time where they were sitting in the days of unpureness. And if you look at Sfirat Omer, it's seven weeks. And each seven, all of the seven weeks have a component of seven days. A woman, which, when she's going through her menstrual cycle, it's really, the Yemei Nida is a very, is a very big correlation to Sfirat Omer. She also counts seven days. From the, from, the, from the rabbis came and instituted that she has to have a certain count when she stops seeing, seeing certain signs. But really, Yemeni Dad, the 49 days of, Korb, of, the, of the Omer, is a woman who's in her menstrual cycle who's counting seven days seven times. Because the Tumah of Mitraim was so powerful, you have to not only be able to leave from one week, you have to do it from all seven weeks. So he, Rabbi Abba and Rabbi Acha are walking on her. And he says to him, Achar Shinimalu, after Am Yisrael got the Brit Milah, they, were, they, they now were in, taken out of the stomach of the Sitra Acha. And they were brought into the Chelek, they were brought into the portion of Hashem. Kevanshin tachzabat nifteka tumamen. Ki shazohan shetzen, the same way that a woman is not allowed to be with her husband during her menstrual cycle. Am Yisrael in the state of Mitzrayim was like a woman in her menstrual cycle. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu had to take him away to bring back his bride. He says in the same way that a woman who separates from her husband has to count seven days, so too over here, when they came to the part of holiness, when they came back to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, when HaKadosh Baruch Hu is now taking his wife, it was a man who was taking his wife out of Egypt. So that wife, in order to be allowed to be together with this man, has to count seven days. But since the impurity of Egypt was such a great impurity, it had to be a seven times seven cycle until they reached the climax, which is Matan Torah, which is the wedding between a Kadosh Baruch Hu and the Jewish people. It's Chatan Bekala coming together. It comes the Zohar and starts us right away. He says, we're going to go into this 12 and you have to understand, you know what's going on? This counting is not a simple, today is the first day, today is the second day. This counting is what's taking a person out of states of impurity one step at a time. Every single day that you're counting the Omer, you have to feel like you're becoming a purer person. You have to feel like something is transpiring inside of you. Something is being fixed. You're being taken away from that hell. What does Mitzrayim mean? Limitation. It's like a person who's, who's tied up, and every single day they're unloosening one of the knots that's tying him up. So really in Sfirat Omer, every single day you have to become looser. The light of godliness has to come down onto you. And like the Ramban says, that really the 49 days of Sfirat Omer is just a continuation of Chol Moed of Pesach. And we know that on Chol Moed of Pesach, what happens? It says, Lo nitnu mo'adim ve'amim tovim la'am Yisrael. The only, the only reason holidays and Chol Moed was given to the Jewish people was to bask in the glory of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So says the Ramban, these 49 days are the highest expression of that basking in the glory of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's basking in the glory of Hashem. Why? Because slowly but surely the knots that are holding you back from getting close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu are being unraveled. And every time you count, today is one day, today is two days, today is three days, another knot is being taken off of you and you're clo coming closer to the groom, which is HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So therefore, it's like a woman who's in Nida and had a separation from her groom. And now there starts the rejuvenation of the relationship because the groom and the bride are, are coming to a higher level of closeness. Says Rabbi Acha and Rabbi Abba, that's what it means, the counting of Firata Omer, because in the 49th, how do we know when did the Kadosh Baruch Hu saved the Jewish people? Because if it was for one more second that the Jewish people would have stayed in Egypt, they would have fallen into the 50th gate of Tumah, into the 50th gate of impurity. Therefore, what are we counting? 
we had to leave 49 gates of impurity. So in contradiction to the 49 gates of impurity that we were in, we were indebted in Mitraim, we were sucked into Mitraim, we are now counting 49 days of holiness. 49 days where each and every single day we're becoming acquainted with the holiness and we're preparing ourselves like a bride prepares herself for the groom. Except over here, HaKadosh Baruch Hu becomes the bride and we become the groom. So comes the Zohar and continues and says, Tachazeh, come and see. Every time the Zohar speaks to us, by the way, the Zohar will always say Tachazeh because seeing is always a higher level than hearing. And other things you'll see there, sometimes the, the Gemara says, Tashma, come in here. The Zohar will tell you, Tachazeh, come and see, because since the Zohar is on a higher level and we're coming to experience something that's higher, it's always going to be with the eyes. So the Zohar Tachazeh, Kol Adam Shelo Sapar Listen to what the Zohar says. You think that when you're counting Sfirat Omer, you're just doing a count? He says, if you didn't count Sfirat Omer, Elu Sheva Shabbatot Mimot, Liskot Letarazot, in order to acquire this sense of purity, meaning if you did not count Sfirat Omer, a person is no longer considered to be pure. To attain purity, you have to go through the counting of Sfirat Omer. When we say the counting of Sfirat Omer, something is happening to us and we're becoming pure one step at a time. Now the, Torah, the Zohar is a little stringent. If you don't count Sfirat Omer, you have no part in the Torah. And I want to understand because really the words of the Zohar here they seem a little stringent. Somebody that comes pure to that day, and he didn't lose one day. When it comes to that night, a person has to dwell himself into Torah. Now, I want to explain something to you very interesting, because really, it seems like the Zohar is being very stringent with us. Meaning that a person who doesn't count these 49 days is not considered tahor. He has no part in the Torah. But really, as much as the Zohar seems stringent, we're going to see that really the answer to this stringency already started in the beginning of the words, v'safartem lachem, and you should count lachem. Really, it seems that many of us focus, when we look into Sfirat Omer, you know, the 49 days are really every day you fix something else. So a person could be lost in a pursuit of fixing himself where he's totally focused on himself. Yet, when the Torah tells us about Sfirat Omer, it says, lachem. Right there, it says, and you have to count you. It's not a singular. It's not v'safartem lecha that you should count for yourself. V'safartem lachem. It has to be a unilateral counting, meaning you're counting for the Jewish people. You're counting for Klal Yisrael. It's not about being focused on yourself. There's a global unity here. We're focusing on the entire nation. That's why it says, V'safartem lachem. Comes the Rambam and tells us like this. What's this mitzvah, Sfirat Omer? It says the mitzvah is to count the days with the weeks. Why? Lefichach mone balayla yasa frown from the first night. It says, mitzvah kol ish mi Israel bechol makom bechol zman. This is a mitzvah that applies all the time. So we know that t- aside from the technicality of the mitzvah, of the commandment, which means to use verbal words and make the bracha, make the blessing and count, there has to be a deeper insight to what's happening when we're counting. And he says like this, really we know that counting of Sfirat Omer has to do, you're not allowed to shave, you're not allowed to cut your hair, we're in a state of mourning. And why are we in a state of mourning? Then the Torah throws into us a curveball. Rabbi Akiva and his students. Rabbi Akiva and 24,000 students. The 24,000 students of Rabbi Akiva passed away in this time. And therefore, we're mourning the students of Rabbi Akiva that passed away in this time. And what, what was the story of, for all of you, I'm just going to repeat the story. We know that Rabbi Akiva had 24,000 students. And it says, And those 24,000 students didn't respect each other. And because they didn't respect each other, they all passed away. And if you look at it, when did they stop passing away? Lamed Gimel Ba'omer. On the 33rd day of the Omer. So the Ramchal and other and the Or Chaim and other Poskim, they come and tell us that really like this. It says in the books like this. The main part of Sfirat Omer, even though there's only 49 days, the main counting 
is really till the 33rd day. Once Lak Baomer comes, something happens. There, there, come, there becomes a switch. And it says like this, Omer. We all know, like we said, Sfirata Omer is to purify a person. The natural inclinations that we have as human beings, we're purifying. But what happens? That on the 33rd day of the Omer, which is Lakba Omer, all of a sudden something happens. The Talmudim of Rabbi Akiva stop dying. And therefore now, it becomes something different. You're no longer, of course, you have to continue to count till the 49 days, but you're no longer becoming a giver. You're no longer the one that's instituting the count. You're counting in a technical form, but you're becoming a receiver. Let's see what that means. And I'll give you an analogy. When we pray Amidah, when a person does the Tefillah Shmoneser three times a day, in the beginning, what happens is as follows. You become the giver. You go each bracha one step at a time and you're building the higher world. And then when you're done praying, we have something called the Chazara. That's when the Chazan repeats the Amida. He repeats. Now what happens? Whatever you built is being brought back down to you. So therefore, he says like this, that Omer works in the same fashion. We built till the 33rd day. We're the givers till the 33rd day, exactly in the same way that the students of Rabbi Akiva passed away. And then once the 33rd day comes, really the count stops. What does it mean the count stops? The light that we gave for the 33rd, whatever effort that we put in until the 33rd day comes back to us now. From the 33rd day until Matan Torah, we're now becoming receivers. Now the light is so great, we're out of bondage and it's becoming greater. And we're getting closer to Hashem, and now we're becoming receivers. That's why he says, until then, Ki Hashem orli. when I sit in darkness, Hashem becomes my light. When does that light happen? On the 33rd day. And I'll, I'll show you how. So we know that the way that we start, the three months that are involved in Sfirat Omer are Nisan, Iyar, and Sivan. We have three months because we start on Pesach, which is the month of Nisan. Then we go to Iyar. Then we go to Sivan. So if you look at the months, what happens? On the Mazal of Nisan is the Tale. And we spoke about this in regards to Egypt. The Tale is the firstborn. Then, which you have what? That's the Zman. He says like this. As Zman Aritsui Mitzad Klal Yisrael. In the beginning count, we now have to appease the Kadosh Baruch Hu. Er, what's Er? Mazalo Shor, it's an ox. What's the ox? You have to now work on every single attribute. Sivan, what's Sivan? Where we end the count. The Mazal of Sivan is Gemini. Gemini means twins. What does that mean when there's twins? Azman Ritsui Mishna Panim Yachtav. Twins, what happens? They're very similar. They're very alike. Look at the beauty of this. When does the count of Sfirat Omer end? In the Mazal, in the astrological sign of Gemini. What, what is Gemini? It means twins. What are twins? They're identical. They're two beings that are the same. How do we become one with the Kadosh Baruch Hu? Through the counting of Sfirat Omer and perfecting ourselves, when we perfected ourselves, we became like our Creator. And since we became like a Kadosh Baruch Hu, when does the counting end? In Mazal Teumim. In that astrological sign of twins. Because the Creator was a twin, and you were working on yourself to make yourself like a Kadosh Baruch Hu. What happens at that climax? That's Matan Torah. Matan Torah, on, that's on the godly level. What happens on the, on the nationalistic level? Am Yisrael becomes one. Ke'ish echad belev echad. After we counted for 49 days, we were able to receive the Torah. Ke'ish echad belev echad because we all became one being. Just like identical twins are so similar in all their aspects, Am Yisrael became similar together. Why? Because they were one. They were identical twins. Every Jew noticed the other Jew. Every Jew cared for the other Jew. And if you look at it, why does the Torah all of a sudden throw into us Rabbi Akiva? What was Rabbi Akiva's model in life? 
ואהבת לרעך כמוך. רבי עקיבא taught his students, and this is why the students suffered such a hard plague. Rabbi Akiva's whole motto was that you have to look at your fellow Jew and you have to love him like yourself. And we know that the Ramak in Tomer Devorah says as follows. He says, what does it mean that you have to love a fellow Jew like you love yourself? He says, you have to look at another Jew. Ki ilu hu hu mamash. It's like he is you. Meaning that if that person just won the lottery, you have to feel like you won the lottery. You have to express the same kind of happiness. Imagine. Another Jew won the lottery. Another Jew got, and by the way, it's much, more, it's much harder to sympathize with somebody or to, or to put yourself in somebody's shoes in a, in a time of happiness. It's very easy to sympathize with somebody when they're going through a time of pain. But says the Ramak, you have to look at every single Jew like he is you, meaning you're not judging him. Whatever situation that Jew is in, you have to feel that kind of pain for that individual. They say once a story, about the Chafetz Chaim. The Chafetz Chaim, a person came to, came to him once and he had a very, he had cancer. And he came to the Chafetz Chaim and he said to him, Rabbi, I have the makhla, I have the disease. I'm a young man. I don't know what to do. I have a wife, I have children. How can I leave this world so premature? Please, Rabbi, help me. Do something for me. And the Chafetz Chaim, we know, his love for every single Jew knew no bounds. But what can he do? The Chafetz Chaim looked at the individual and said to him, don't worry, everything will be okay. I promise you, you'll be able to, you'll live and you'll see grandchildren. So the individual left the Chafetz Chaim, felt full of inspire, inspiration. The Rebbe told him he was going to be okay. And exactly like the Rebbe said, the disease left him. And years later, the same individual that now had children and had grandchildren, he, he had a friend and his friend came to him and he says, you know, I was just di diagnosed with the, with the sickness. I don't know what to do. I'm beside myself. What can I do? And he was pouring out his, his, he was pouring out his sorrow to his friend. So his friend said to him, don't worry. I, I'll tell you, I, 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 I know what to do. His friend said, why? He goes, we have to go to the Chafetz Chaim. They went to the Chafetz Chaim and the, the, the friend went into the Chafetz Chaim and says, Rebbe, you know, I was here. I don't know if you remember me but I was here many years ago and you told me, and you told me that everything was going to be okay. I have a friend, he's in the same situation and I, I want you to do something for him. So the Chafetz Chaim, as much as he loved every Jew, he looked at this individual who was a stranger to him that he only met for a few minutes and he said to him, listen to me, my dear son, I want you to know something. You've come to me many years later. I would love to help this fellow Jew, but you should know that when you came to me that day, your words were like swords in my heart. I felt like it was me that was going through the situation. I felt like it was me leaving my wife and kids. I felt like it was me that, I, that had to leave this world. He said, and I couldn't take that pain. He said to him, I was much younger than, and I fasted for you for 40 days. The person was beside himself. Imagine the Chafetz Chaim fasting for a stranger for 40 days. He said, I fasted for you for 40 days in order to, to besiege mercy from the heaven that you should, that your disease should leave you. He said, unfortunately, I'm much older now and I can't do anything for this fellow Jew, but pray for him. This was what, what a person imbues v'aftar l'racha kamocha. This is really what v'safartem lachem is. This journey of 49 days on one hand, yes, a person has to fix himself. But why are we fixing ourselves? What's the point of fixing yourself? What's the point of trying to become a better person? Because we want to imbue what the Chafetz Chaim was doing. We want to imbue that we become, we put ourselves in the shoes of every single Jew and we go through their journey. It's not enough to fix myself. I have to bring every single Jew with me. Like the Briskarov once said a story. The Briskarov once said a story, he says there was a man and he was very wealthy and one of his children was getting married. And he sent the postcard to his son. He said to him, listen, make sure you come and make sure that you bring your brother with you and make sure that you make your brother look glorified and give him the nicest clothes. Whatever you put out, it's on me. I want to make sure that your brother looks just as good as you. So it came to the day where they came. They had to come to the train station. And the two brothers and the brother remembered the letter of his father and said, oh, my God, I forgot to tell my brother what to do. I have to now grab him. So he grabbed his brother the way that he was and he brought him to this train station. And when they were walking down, the first brother comes down looking beautiful, dressed well. The kids were looking great. And then the second brother comes down off the chariot 
and the in-laws are looking, a person that seems to be like rushed and sweated and doesn't know what's going on. His clothes weren't the nicest of clothes. So the in-laws look, look at their, their new in-laws and say, Who, who's this? And the father looked with shame. And he said to him, that's also my son. So the brisker up said, this is a lesson to us. When we come to Kadosh Baruch Hu and fix ourselves, it's only, not only enough to fix ourselves. When we come to Olam Abba and we look great, we have to make sure that our brother looks great too. That's what the Chafetz Chaim was doing. That's what the brisk Rav is telling. That's why it says, V'sfartem lachem. That's why Rabbi Akiva, that's why we get thrown into Rabbi Akiva. We get thrown into Rabbi Akiva, gets thrown in to this idea of, of Sfirat Omer. Why does Rabbi Akiva get thrown into the Sfirat Omer? Because the Kadosh Baruch Hu is telling us, you know what the whole purpose of counting the Sfirat Omer is? The whole purpose of counting Sfirat Omer is to come to this to Har Sinai. What's the purpose of coming to Har Sinai? Ke'i shechad belev echad like one person, like one person. How can you be a one person if you leave your brother behind? So the Or Chaim tells us, the Or Chaim tells us something like this. He says, what's Firat Omer? He says, we know that Moshe Rabbeinu, the 49 days, he says as follows. He says, there's a remez. He says, you know, remez, the Jewish people and our souls are like the luchot abrit. They're like the tablets. What happens? A person really, when he engages in Torah learning, and when he engages in speaking to Hashem, really there should be an abundance of light. You should be exploding with desire for HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You shouldn't know what to do with yourself. But he says, you know what happens? He says, they, our sins cause a distraction. They make a veil between us and HaKadosh Baruch Hu. They were made of sapphire. Laze says the Or Chaim, What does it mean, Vesafartim Lachem? He says, You know what you're doing slowly but surely as you count the 49 days? You're making yourself, you're making yourself like a sapphire. You're making yourself like that glowing sapphire. And I want to show you, I want to show you how Rabbi Akiva teaches us that lesson. Comes the Sfatimet and tells us like this. We know that the days of the Sfirat Omer is Tikkun Amidot. You have to fix your attributes. Why are we fixing our attributes? What would, what's the point of fixing the attributes? Of course, it's the Kamta Kadosh Baruch Hu. But you know, when Moshe Rabbeinu went up to Shemaim, the Midrash says as follows. Moshe Rabbeinu was up in Shemaim, and the angel says, Mali lo disha what, is a, what is a man that's born from a woman doing amongst us? This is a place of angels. This is not a place of, this is not a, place of, of a mortal being. What is that mortal being doing over here? So what, is the, what, what does the Midrash say? The Midrash says that what happens as follows, Akadosh Baruch Hu switched the face of Moshe Rabbeinu to who? To Avraham Avinu. Says Akadosh Baruch Hu, aren't you ashamed? You're going to attack Moshe Rabbeinu? You're going to attack a person? You're going to attack Avram Avinu? When you, were, when you were at his house, when you were at his house, what did he do? When you were at his house, he, he invited you in. He gave you, he, he made sure to give you to eat. How is it that you're going to attack him? But we have to ask a deeper question. Out of all the people that HaKadosh Baruch Hu could have, out of all the people that HaKadosh Baruch Hu could have changed Moshe Rabbeinu's face to look like, why did he change it? Why did he change it to why did he change it to Avraham Avinu? Out of all those people, because when you're gonna build the foundation of the Jewish people, you have to build it on Chesed. Avraham Avinu was the foundation of Chesed. When you're the foundation of Chesed, that's the building of the nation. And what happens to Moshe Rabbeinu as his face turns into Avraham Avinu? The angels don't attack. Because they say a nation that's built on chesed, we can't attack. Furthermore, Moshe Rabbeinu, when he goes up to Shemaim, HaKadosh Baruch Hu shows him everything that's going to happen in the world from now till the, end of it, till the end until Mashiach comes. And he shows him Rabbi Akiva. And he sees Rabbi Akiva sitting and he's starting to teach. And even Moshe Rabbeinu didn't understand what Rabbi Akiva was starting to teach. So, at that moment, 
Moshe Rabbeinu says to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, if you have such a person, if you have such a person in your, in your world, like Rabbi Akiva, why are you giving the Torah with me? Let him have the Torah. He's the one that should give the Torah. Why should he be the one that should give the Torah? Out of all the people giving the Torah, why should it be Rabbi Akiva? Oh, because Moshe Rabbeinu understands that if a person's motto is, if a Rabbi Akiva's motto was to teach us to love every single Jew, that's Klal Gadol Batorah. That's the whole foundation of the Torah. Says Moshe Rabbeinu, he's the one that you should give the Torah because really the whole purpose of learning Torah and the whole purpose of perfecting yourself, the whole purpose that we're counting this 49 days is to come to a level, like one person with one heart, to make sure that every single Jew is like me and I feel like every other single Jew. Rabbi Akiva imbued that idea. He should be the one that could give the Torah. And that's why we're presented with Rabbi Akiva and the, and the students over here. Because that's the lesson. You're right. You're counting Sfirat Omer. And you're right that you're trying to fix yourself. But why are you trying to fix yourself? You're trying to fix yourself in order that you'll be able to be a person that's not involved with himself, but you're involved with every other single Jew. Just like Rabbi Akiva. Because when Rabbi Akiva saw a Jew in need, he put himself first. So that's really the lesson of Sirat Omer. It's on one hand, you're fixing yourself. On the other hand, what happens is that a person is not fixing himself for himself. He's fixing himself in order to become one with his fellow Jew. And we know, I just want to share a, a couple more stories with you. The, we know one of the things that's going to bring about Mashiach is what? The Pasuk says like as follows. It says in the Tana de Vel Yau, it says, Shomer mishpat, Shmeru mishpat vasud zaka, ki kuva yeshuati lavo, vetzitkati lidgalot. Says the Kadosh Baruch Hu, you know what's going to cause me to come out? You know what's going to cause me to reveal myself? What's going to cause me to reveal myself is when Am Yisrael does zaka. Why? Because when a person does zaka, whether it's with money or whether you're helping another Jew, says the Kadosh Baruch Hu, that's how you're going to redeem yourself from this exile. You want to get out of this exile? You're going to redeem it through the idea of tzedakah. You're going to redeem it through the idea of giving to each other. When a person gives to another person, when you're giving of yourself, money sometimes is much easier to give. We're asking you to give of yourself. You know, once they came to, they came to the Aftarav, and they asked the Aftarav, teach us about V'aftal or Chakamocha. So the Aftarav said there was Parshat Balak, and the Aptarav says, Balak, Balak is Vafta or Chakamocha. So the Hasidim, they always want to know what, what's their, you know, their, when the Rebbe speak, it's very deep. He goes, if you take the letters Balak, Bet, Lamed, Ku, that's Vafta or Chakamocha. So, so usually Hasidim, they accept everything the Rebbe says, but then they went out and they're like, how, does, how do you get Vafta or Chakamocha, love your fellow like you love yourself, from the words Bet, Lamed, Ku? He told them, if you take Roshet, if you take the beginnings of Bet, Lamed, Ku, that's Vaftal or Chakamocha. So the Hasidim are like, what do you mean? Bet, Vaftal or Chakamocha, you need a Vav. And then Kuf, you need a Chaf. How's that Roshet Tevot? How's that the beginning letters of Vaftal or Chakamocha? So they came into the Rebbe and they told him, Rebbe, what does it mean? He goes, you don't understand. The whole Parshat Balak, everything, the word Balak, that's Roshet Tevot, Vaftal or Chakamocha. So the Apta Rav saw, saw that the Hasidim were in a quarrel. He saw that the Hasidim didn't understand what the Rebbe was meaning. And he says to him, Rabotai, my fellow Hasidim, if you're going to start to be medagdek, if you're going to look at differences between a bet and a vav and a kaf and a chuf, if you're going to start to be so meticulous, then you don't understand what it means to the after a chakamocha. If you want to love your fellow Jew, don't be so meticulous about what he is, whether he's doing good, whether he's a, he's a good Jew, whether he keeps Shabbat, he doesn't keep Shabbat. A Jew is a Jew, he said to them. If you're going to be so meticulous about the letters, you don't understand what it means to be the Aftal or Chakamocha. When a Jew looks at another Jew, you can't be meticulous. You have to just love him. You have to just want to give him. That's the idea of the Aftal or Chakamocha. That's what it means to give tzedakah. When somebody asks you for, for help, you don't start to be whether he deserves it, he doesn't deserve it. You go out and you give him that help. That's the Aftal or Chakamocha. And you know it says that Rabbi Akiva, the great Rabbi Akiva, at the time of his death, when the Romans took out Rabbi Akiva, it says that with the Yatsani Shmato Bechad, Abatko came out and says, Rabbi Akiva, Tamuzman Lechayolaba, you're welcome to the world to come. So 
why is it that the neshama, the soul of Rabbi Akiva, left in this word echad? And Rabbi Akiva says, Yamai, the students told Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi, this Zet Torah Vezos Chara, you gave your whole life to Torah. And now look at what they're doing to you. They're taking you and they're, and they're causing you such pain. And this is, what, this is the reward. So what does Rabbi Akiva answer them? He says, Yamai, my whole life, I waited for this opportunity. I waited for the situation. Until his neshama went out and left him in the word one. So what's the simple meaning? The Rabbi Akiva's whole life wanted to do a Kiddush Hashem. He wanted to praise the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, And he wanted to do, he wanted to love Hashem with all of his Yetzirah, whether it's his Yetzirah, whether it's his evil inclination. And he wanted to totally nullify himself. But I think the insight that I think it's true and that I, that I thought about today, I think there's a much deeper insight to why Rabbi Akiva's neshama left him with one. It says Rabbi Akiva, what does it mean? My whole life, I waited for this moment. Says Rabbi Akiva, you know what I was trying to, to teach the Jewish people my whole life? I was trying to teach the Jewish people the one thing. You want to be a successful nation? You have to be a chad. What did the brothers of Yosef, when they came, they said, Kulanu bne'ish echad nachno. We're all the sons of one person. You want to be a successful nation? You want to go through this v'safart and lachem? You know why you're counting? You know why you're working so hard to get this great Torah? You know, it's not just about your relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's about what Rabbi Akiva gave his whole life for. Echad. Ke'ish echad belev echad because we were wanting to become one. Says Rabbi Akiva, my whole life, I gave to the Jewish people and I wanted to teach them one lesson. Become one. Become a unified nation. That's exactly what HaKadosh Baruch Hu is waiting for. Hashem wants to redeem us more than we want to be redeemed. But until we look at every single Jew, like he is you, you have to feel every single Jew in your bones. Like Adam Arishon with all the neshamot, all the souls that were inside of him. Like a stranger that comes up to you in the street and you have to be like the Chafetz Chaim. You have to be willing to fast 40 days. Imagine if somebody asked you, can you fast 40 days for a stranger? That's what it means, Echad, says Rabbi Akiva. And that's why Moshe Rabbeinu says, if you have a person like Rabbi Akiva, give, him, give the Torah through him. That's what we're really counting for. Why are we perfecting ourselves? Why? Because Tachazeh, Rabbi Acha and Rabbi Abba were walking and they were discussing the secrets of Sfirat Omer. And in their depths, you know what they were discussing? Vesafartim lachem. Why are we counting? In order to become lachem. In order to become to that highest of level. That level where Am Yisrael is ke'ish, ke'ish echad belev echad. Like one unit, one person. When Am Yisrael is at that level, that's the climax. That's what HaKadosh Baruch Hu says that bizchut zaka, I'm going to reveal myself. Mashiach is going to come only when we become echad. That's why Rabbi Akiva's soul left him at one. Because his whole life he was working to bring the Jewish people to become echad because he knew that that was the secret of redemption. So when we're counting the 49 days, our biggest impurity that we're trying to rid of ourselves is that there's separation between us. That's the biggest impurity that exists in the Jewish people. When we unite, that's the biggest state of purity. That's, that's Kedushim to you. That's the biggest state of Kedushah. That's why you see in this week's parasha, we're speaking about the parasha of the Kohanim. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, and more, what's the parasha of the Kohanim? The Kohanim, what do they do? They make peace in the Jewish people. That's why Aaron Kohen is something that, the, the Midah of Aaron Kohen is something that we have to imbue. Oev Shalom Verodev Shalom. Aaron Kohen gave his life for every single Jew. He chased peace because he knew that that was the secret of everything. When the Jewish nation is in a state of peace, when they're one with each other, that's when HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, I'm ready to reveal myself to you. I'm ready to show the world that this is my nation. We're working so hard to come to that climax, that night of Shavuot, and we're counting day in to get that, to leave that idea of Mitzrayim. What was the idea of Mitzrayim? What was that limitation? That limitation was you're so focused on yourself. Stop being focused on yourself and start focusing on the other person. Says Rabbi Akiva, I gave my whole life. 
and I'm willing for my neshama to go out in this word echad. Why? Because that's my message. My message to the Jewish people is, you want Mashiach to come, you want to receive the Torah, you want everything to go away, you want all the diseases, you want a world of glory, echad, become one. When you become one, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to reveal himself again. The Beit HaMikdash is going to be again. We're going to sing and dance with Mashiach. We're going to sing and dance with each other. We're going to be a one nation. That's the secret of Geula. That was the secret of Rabbi Akiva's Neshama leaving with one. I wish you all well, and God willing, we'll see you again next week.